Hey, this tutorial is designed for beginners. No, it isn't. This is a 3JS project where we're just gonna start from scratch and build something fun. And when I say scratch, I mean the starter template that I can that I have up on download on that I have up on GitHub that you can go download. See the link in the description. We've got this box. I'm gonna tell it to stop spinning. And I'm gonna change its material to a mesh basic material. The simplest and most performant material in 3JS. Okay, and I just got rid of that hemisphere light. I'll zoom out a little bit and let's scale up the gradient background a little bit. It's just a 3JS object, so it has the common properties of scale, position, rotation. Set scalar. And let's just double it. Okay, there's our space. I'm gonna scooch back the camera a little bit more. Yeah, my one little cube is looking pretty lonely. Let's change this code where I create this box, this cube, and make it reusable. Get box. And now it just returns a cube. Format that. Great, now I don't have any box, but I could say const box equals get box. And scene.add box. And now I have a box again. I want the color to be separate. Const color equals 0x80880. Let's say cube.rotation.y equals math.random. That's fine. And let's do the same for x. Let's say const num boxes is equal to 15 for let i equal 0 while i is less than num boxes i plus equals 1 get box box group dot add box const box group is equal to a new 3 dot group scene dot add box group wireframe is true to see it they're all kind of jangled up there. Let's just leap way ahead and import the post-processing, the effects composer and uh, render pass, thank you. And I'd like the Unreal Bloom pass. And um, I've got my um, import paths set up like this. After I define the controls, I'm gonna set up the post-processing by creating a new render scene I'm gonna create a new bloom pass. Set the threshold, the strength, the radius. You might be able to do that in the constructor, I don't know. Then I wanna create a new effects composer, composer.addPass, render scene, and the bloom pass. Come down here to renderer, change that to composer, like so. And now we're already getting bloomy. Okay. I want to create a helper method called get sphere point. I want to pass in the radius. Although it's it's thinking I don't want to. Um, and I want to kind of tweak that radius too. Uh, not not that times 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5. So really subtle at first. And now I'm going to use that to position each cube. Const x comma y comma z equals get sphere point, and I pass in a number for the radius. And then I'm gonna say cube dot position dot set x, y, z. Let's see what happens. All right. If I take away this line here, they should all live comfortably on the surface of a sphere with a radius of four. You can see that better cube dot scale dot set scalar um no no just just the size which i'll just make it 0.1 for now so much smaller let's really ramp up the number of boxes and this should make a sphere pretty evident it works nicely You know, another way to do this, instead of returning this thing, a new vector 
sorry, a new three dot vector three. Get rid of the X, the Y, and the Z. Returning a vector three. And instead of deconstructing this, I could just say position dot copy. Pause. I think that's gonna be happier. I increase the size of these guys, it'll fill up the whole sphere. And reduce the number. And now add back that randomness so that they are greater than and less than that sphere. How about um, const half radius? equals radius divided by 2. Or radius times 0 0.5 is the way I like to write it. And then I'll just use that. <laughs> Hang on. Hmm. Times radius. This is what I meant to do. That's better. Kind of. It's a little bit bigger than I'd like, so reduce it a little bit. We don't need these to be wireframe anymore. And we need fog. That's a, this fog is going to really sell the juiciness of this scene. 3.fog exp2 and this I want to be bg call. I want this to be a variable that, that I'm going to use const bg call equals that number. Now I can pass that to my gradient background call here. And they should be the same. Wow, I'm not really feeling that at all. I see the fog working, but it doesn't really look right. I don't see this working at all. Now it should be green. It is. Well, that's lovely. I want to steal it from here. I liked this value, so I'm going to use that. BG call. Now that now it works the way I want it to. Those boxes are going to be bigger now. I really like the way they look in here. And I like the way they're animating. Why don't we do a couple of things? Let's put a wireframe around them. And and mess with their scale and animate them. Let's animate them first. So cube dot user data equals, and then I'm just going to have an update function in here. Update Let's save it and see. It's okay so far. Our box group is going to animate all the boxes for us. Here's how box group dot user data dot update is equal to a function. And all of your children are going to have be updated like that. Now inside of here, I can say box group dot user data dot update. And what happens? Oh, look at that. They all start moving around in a delicious way. If I wanted to, I could say const rate equals math.random, some small number, and then replace this. Now each box will have a different rotation rate, which is way, way, way too fast. Way, 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 way too fast. Okay. Let's give each box wireframe edges. Here, I'm going to add a wireframe const edges equals a new edges geometry and pass in the geo. 
now help me out lines is a line segments using the same material no i think it should use line material line mat and then create um line segments no i'm just going to add it mesh dot add lines And I just have to define line mat here. Const line mat is equal to a new line basic material. The color will be that. And the line width, that, that doesn't really matter. And I broke it. Do you know why I broke it? I don't. Uh, mesh is not defined. It's called cube. How could I have named it cube? There. Oh, look at that. Let's turn on anti-aliasing. It's already anti-aliased. Oh, let's just scale up those wire, those, those guys a little bit. We're getting closer, aren't we? This is feckless. You know what you could do, though, which I'm curious about, is to say fog false and see what that looks like. As you zoom way out, it's, they're just as bright. I don't know if that's better or worse. Leave your opinion in the comments below. Okay, to get it to look like this, uh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> the rotation is wrong. Let's fix the rotation and let's also scale them differently. Here I'm setting scalar, but instead, is there a utility to get a random vector three? I wish I knew. All right, I just stole this from the other version I'd made. So I'm just gonna set like a max scale and then set the scale for each randomly with a minimum of 0 0.1 times that upper scale. Let's see how that looks. Oh boy, not good mesh yeah now lastly this should make it less chattery lines dot scale dot set scalar ever so slightly bigger is it less chattery i think it's less chattery and they respond to fog let's scale up that background a little bit like that and let's fix the rotation what we're going to do is update this update method first thing i'm just going to reduce the rate and then i want to add um i want to rotate only on one axis but i'm going to pick that axis randomly like this i'm going to say hey are you less than one, then you're X. If you're greater than two, you're Z. Otherwise, you're Y. And rewrite this with this syntax, like that. And yeah, like that. That's what happens. Let's compare them. This, one, this one's brighter. I like how, much, how it's brighter too. Is that because this value here needs to be pumped up a little bit just for fun we could update the box groups update method just to rotate the box group slightly box group dot rotation dot y plus equals some small value or double that do some variations on this um, change the color for example I think it would be sweet to grab a color palette you, that you like and then use that throughout. Set the background color and like play around with the box colors too. All right, I'm going to define it up top because I, I'm going to need to use it. Let's define our palette at the top of our scene so that equals palette. math.floor math.random times palette like apologies for this long string here 
Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> that's also not nice. So we've got an issue here. Some of the colors are just too bright. I think I can see which ones they are too. This guy, pretty cool though. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna leave, leave the color as is there. However, when I'm getting a box and setting this color, I'll just grab a random color there. Uh, what do you think? Is it cool? I think if I set this fog color to black, it might look better. Whoops, that's not black. I don't know if it looks better. It's interesting, sort of. I think I liked it better with the BG call which tints everything. Okay, so the palette was not that successful. If we just fill it with this color, it'll look the same as it did before. And then maybe add some other colors, like, um, like that color, which is black. Okay, that's sort of interesting. I think I would just stick with this for now, because I like the result there best. As always, thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one.